Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's movie vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today I am not feeling well at all. I feel like total garbage. I literally just came from the doctor where I waited for about two hours to end up getting a five minute appointment where the only thing that was done was another appointment was made to test for allergies in three weeks. Even though I'm having the reactions now and I'm in a lot of pain now and I'm having a lot of other issues now. And so the only reason why I'm even making a video today is because of the anger and frustration driving me to. So that's just a little bit update because I know that yesterday I had mentioned I was looking a little bit like Forrest Whitaker with my allergic reaction. Um, I sent a couple of pictures to uh, to my Valkyrie and a couple other people just to show just how bad it was when I first woke up a couple days ago. Um, but yeah. That's just a little update on me for anyone that cares. And if you don't, well, here we're getting into the news. And also, just so you know, we are going to be getting into some sp some potential spoiler territory. Again, potential spoiler territory. If you're one of the three people that still cares about Captain Marvel, if you're still one of the trolls out there that cares about what happens in Captain Marvel and you don't want anything spoiled for you, this is not the video for you because this video is going to explain why one of these spoilers, this big spoiler, as far as the identity of, the true identity of Marvel. Why it shows without a shadow of a doubt that there is totally an agenda behind this film. And it's not just Brie Larson. It is now the actual film itself and what we're seeing in the film itself making that very clear. All right. So that was your chance to click away. And if you are still with me, yes, the Marvel character has been revealed. So for those that don't know, for those maybe that have not been following the comic books, the first iteration, the first Captain Marvel was actually Marvel, who is a Cree, um, a Cree person, a Cree male. And so that was the original comic book character. That character has gone through several changes over the years. At one point in time, Marvel and um, Miss Miss Marvel, you know, Carol Danvers, actually get bonded together because of an explosion. Obviously, with that, it's not. <laughs> don't think of it as a fusion dance type of connection, but rather that basically she gets affected by the Kree within him and gets adapted by that, or rather, she adapts some of that personality, some of those um, some of those traits into her, and that's what gives her superpowers. So Miss Marvel did not have any superpowers. She was just Carol Danvers until this explosion happened. But anyway, Marvel was originally a man. Well, <laughs> even though they have just confirmed that Jude Law is indeed not going to be Marvel, like many of us thought, instead he is going to be some kind of commander named Yonrog, what we have found out is that, yes, indeed, Marvel is going to be played by a woman. Yes, you heard that right. Marvel, the first Captain Marvel, who is a man, has now been recast as a woman. And that woman is Annette Bening. So as it says here, when Carol encounters the supreme intelligence, it projects an image of someone from Carol's memories to her. And that's who Carol, see who Carol sees the supreme intelligence as. The supreme intelligence projects itself as someone different to everyone it encounters. Think of the Bogart and Harry Potter. Only this involves happiness rather than primal fear. But to Carol, it projects itself as a woman who Brie Larson's heroine thinks is her mom. However, we soon learn that this woman isn't her mom. Rather, it's a Cree in disguise who is a doctor on Earth that saved Carol. But this isn't just any Cree, it's Marvel, played in this instance by Annette Benning. Now, I know some of you might be saying, like, oh, well, isn't it saying that, you know, she only appears, that Marvel only appears as Annette Benning because of the Supreme Intelligence, and what Annette Benning actually is is the Supreme Intelligence, and so therefore it's not actually Marvel? You could say that. However, at the end of the day, what we have is the first time we have Marvel released in the Captain Marvel movie, the first ever Captain Marvel character has now been gender swapped as a woman. Now, I know some of you might say, well, what's the big deal? It wouldn't be that much of a deal if you didn't already have Brie Larson going off on this feminazi tangent almost every single day of her press tour for this film. You know, you would you would be thinking that it would, you know, wouldn't be a part of the story. You would think that it wouldn't have any significance if you did not actually know that Captain Marvel as a comic has for a very long time now been extremely woke. Just this earlier today, CBR.com, or just a couple days ago, Captain Marvel battles misogyny not only in her new comic, but in real life as well. Remember when everyone's saying that, oh, it's just a bunch of white uh, sexist who are, you know, white sexist men who are, you know, driving down the score for Captain Marvel before it even comes out and, oh, the misogyny, oh, everything else. But no, we actually get it in the comics as well. In fact, <laughs> as it says here, in a well-timed release, Captain Marvel number two highlights women banding together to survive a man's world. Literally. This new Captain Marvel series, written by Kelly Thompson with an art by Carmen Carnero, mm, so very feminine, continues Carol's story when where the life of Captain Marvel series left off. Oh, I bet that series did very well. The Avengers not <laughs> the Avengers not back in the superhero business long before there is a major attack by a supervillain. In this case, it's a seven-foot-tall misogynist named Nuclear man. Yes, you heard that right. The character description is a seven foot tall 
misogynist named Nuclear Man. Yes, that is what's going on right now in the comics for Captain Marvel. So if you didn't think that Captain, you know, Captain Marvel was going to be a woke film, not only can we look to the previous comics from 2012, not only can we look to the multiple, multiple, <laughs> multiple countless numbers of reboots that Captain Marvel has had since 2012, we can also look to the very new release of the Captain Marvel storyline where you have a actual character being described as a misogynist, where a group of women have to come together to defeat him. If, if this isn't, like, a sign, that and also that Marvel, again, a male character, has now been turned into a female. And people are saying, oh, well, you know, maybe it just appears as Annette Benning. Um, if you actually look to the powers that Marvel has, shape-shifting is not one of them. And so, therefore, the only way that they could defend this, the only way that they could say, oh, it's technically not Marvel, is to say, oh, well, it's a supreme intelligence. And so, therefore, the person that she's seeing only looks like Annette Benning, but it not is not actually. But once again, why would you? not make Marvel some really cool actor so that way in the future you can actually bring Marvel back into the discussion. You know, in the future you could actually have a Miss Marvel, Marvel and Captain Marvel story arc. They've obviously by making this decision, they've obviously either decided to one make Annette Benning the new Marvel and hopefully in the future they are having in their minds that Annette Benning is going to be having her own solo film as Marvel. Or what they're doing is they're saying, we're not going to actually follow through with Marvel. We do not care about Marvel. And so therefore, we're just going to portray her as Annette Benning because why would we want to have a male in that character? And why would we want to make any men in this movie look good? Keep this in mind that when you talk about Jan Rog in the comics, in the history of the comics, he is a bad guy. So happens to be played by a white male. Interestingly enough, he's Kree, and yet all the other Kree are mostly blue, and yet he's white. I think that's definitely them trying to make a very clear point as to the story that they're trying to tell. And on top of this, the fact that you have these first reactions coming out where you have these critics who are trying to defend this movie so much, and in the process, they're actually revealing way too much. They're revealing way too much about what kind of a film and how woke this film is going to be. Just look at this Katie Burt person. Some initial Captain Marvel reactions. Cat people will love this movie. All right, need I say more? Uh, again, obviously, you can be a man and you can love cats, but cat people is usually, usually talking about single white or single women who have rejected men or don't get, <laughs> have never been able to get relationships with men, etc. Usually cat people, that is how you think. That is the stereotypical cat person that you think of. So the fact that she's saying cat people will love this movie, mm, maybe there's something else there. Or maybe she's just saying, I'm just saying that people who like cats will like it because there's a cat in it. That could be true. However, I read some of the other comments that you have and I start to wonder. You say, severe, several truly magnificent music moments for the 90s kid. Okay, I like 90s music. I'm sure I'll like those <laughs> moments, but that might be the only thing that I like about the film. And these last two, I think, are really telling. Carol's hero moment was very cathartic, true to the female experience. So not just that she has a hero moment, not that it's just cathartic, but that it's true to the so-called female experience. Makes it very clear to me that this is a film and this is a character and this is going to be a character arc that is going to be trying to fulfill this so-called female experience and therefore, we can assume that it's going to be woke in some way. Because most men and women that I know don't talk about their male experience or the female experience. They just say, this is life. This is my life as a person. It's interesting that they just make this, again, every single comment from these major news publications, all of these uh, early reviews, almost every single one of them has some mention of the feminine aspect and the female persona and the female experience, as it says here. And it's just making you think to yourself, why do you think so many people, men, women of various races and backgrounds, are so fed up with Captain Marvel before it's even come out? Could it possibly be because we're sick and tired of this identity politics being driven down our throats? And people say, oh, well, you know, you're just reading too much into this. Once again, the, the current comic, the most recent release of the comic has a misogynist character, a misogynist villain named Nuclear Man. You have Marvel, who is a male character, being recast as a woman. <laughs> and then, of course, you also have this constant nonsense coming out about Captain Marvel has now passed up Aquaman and now, and also Wonder Woman as well, and take a pre sales. And now we're back to the pre sale talk. I'm so sick and tired of all this nonsense. They are trying to prop this film up so damn much. They want this film to be this giant success. They want this film to break records. They want this film to make more than Wonder Woman. And based on this, if the pre-sales are everything, which in the end they really aren't, then at this point, Wonder Woman should not be able to have made more than, than Captain Marvel. You know, Wonder Woman made around $103 million by the end of its opening weekend run. 
and a lot of people are suspecting that, you know, Captain Marvel could make between 80 and 120 million dollars. Excuse me again. Sorry, I'm still sick. So what you're telling me is that you're now trying to make it very clear. This is going to be the biggest thing ever. Advanced ticket sales for Captain Marvel are the third biggest for any title in the MCU behind Avengers Infinity War and Black Panther, according to Fandango. Also, once again, this is only according to Fandango. This is not according to the big theaters. This is not according to Adam Tickets. This is not according to every single one of them. Here's another thing that people don't often understand. Having worked in a movie theater, I know that a lot of people, and I would say a huge chunk of people, don't buy tickets either until opening night or they buy their tickets at the theater beforehand and if they buy their tickets at the theater beforehand there is no way of keeping track of that unless you actually go to each individual theater and you know track those ticket sales so this is just a straw man this is just them trying to say and hype up this film saying this is going to be the event that you need to see that's why they're doing it they want this to be the film the event the event of a lifetime that you have to see but why is it something that you have to see could it be because oh it's true to the female experience and also, as it says in number four, the MCU, the MCU feels more complete now that Carol is in it. Now that there's a whammon in it, now it's more complete. And on top of that, you have the misogynist nuclear man and also the fact that Annette Benning has now been cast as Marvel, And you got yourself hilarity all over the place. So again, guys, sorry if I don't have my normal energy as usual. Sorry if I'm coming across as six. I am. I'm probably going to try and pass out after this video, but really the only thing driving me is this anger for the doctor that made me wait two hours for a five minute conversation where all she did was give me an appointment to something else that I could have done myself three weeks from now. So that is where I am at this point in time. But what are y'all's thoughts on this? Once again, I said and warned you that there would be spoilers in here. What do you think about Annette Benning being cast as Marvel? It does not make any sense within the context of the story because the character of Marvel is a man, is a Cree man. There is no powers listed, at least on Wikipedia and other sources that I looked into before I did this video that state that he can shapeshift at all. So that doesn't make any damn sense. They might try and say, oh no, she's the supreme intelligence and so therefore it only looks like her. However, that just doesn't make any sense because it would make a lot more sense and it would be a lot better story wise to actually introduce an actor playing Marvel so that maybe you could actually if the Captain Marvel franchise does as well as everyone's saying that they are oh you know it's passing up Aquaman it's passing up. okay great well then why don't you have a man cast in the role so that way eventually down the line maybe you can do a Marvel movie maybe you can have a crossover event maybe you can actually start to bring more of these characters in but by doing this, what they've done is either they've kicked the you know kicked the can down the road or they have established that Annette Benning is going to be Marvel which I think is just hilarious seeing everything that's being said about this film and how this really much proves, this to me proves without a shadow of a doubt that this film is indeed going to be woke. Not only do you have this going on, not only do you have people saying this is true to the female experience, and it's now more complete because a whammon is in it, and you have, again, the Captain Marvel comics themselves talking about misogynist and a main villain being, again, in their character description, a misogynist named Nuclear Man. This is truly amazing to me. We're, we're living in amazing times, everybody. And also, uh, someone on another YouTube channel just talked about how apparently someone was trying to get a refund for their tickets and they weren't allowing it. I don't believe that necessarily because, again, I used to work at a movie theater and there is no stipulation that says that you cannot get a refund for a ticket. However, if there is indeed some situation or some movie theater or some experience that you can't get a refund on, that I think would be extremely interesting to look into. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, smash the like button, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Once again, very sorry for the sickness in all of the nonsense going on the last couple days but seriously this whole thing is just amazing to me have a wonderful day and as always god bless